Heels World. What is up, Heels World? It's your boy Heel, Perulian Strong Style himself, back with a new video. This will be my WWE No Mercy 2016 pay per view review overall. I don't want to say this pay per view was lackluster. I feel like there was a lot of expectations with this pay per view, being that Backlash was amazing. Being that SmackDown Live, when you think about it, has been kicking ass ever since the brand split. And a lot of people went in, you know, with the same belief, hey, Backlash was amazing, it was great, No Mercy will be no exception at all. And honestly, I felt like No Mercy was decent to okay at best, in my honest opinion. But nonetheless, it was a watchable show. It kicked off with AJ Styles versus John Cena versus Dean Ambrose for the World Heavyweight Championship in a triple threat match. This was supposed to be the main event, but being that WWE didn't want this match competing with the presidential debate, they chose to announce on Twitter that this would open the show, which in my opinion is a no-no. I don't care if the World Cup is on, if the Pope is speaking, if the Grammys are on, if the World Series is on, if the Super Bowl is on, the NBA Finals, the Stanley Cup, I don't care what's going on, the world title should always go on last. This literally reminded me of WWE back in 2012 when they would have Alberto Del Rio and Sheamus opening the show for the World Heavyweight title on their filler pay-per-views but nonetheless this match overall was a very very good exciting match the crowd was going ape shit the big thing on this match as well leading up hey could john cena become a 16-time world champion could he tie flair's record and they were hyping that up as well even flair posted a tweet on twitter talking about cena becoming a 16-time champion could he do it what have you and it seemed like it was going to happen too there was a moment in the match where Cena had Styles in the STF and Styles was about to tap so it seemed and Ambrose grabbed Styles' hand to prevent the tap out which I thought was a good spot but one thing I did not agree with is the double submission on AJ Styles by both Cena and Ambrose with Styles tapped out which the bell rang, the referee didn't call for the bell which again, I feel like you could have done without that in my honest opinion but then after that Styles grabbed the chair and beat up John Cena with it for the 1 2 3 win. Nonetheless, I'm happy that Styles won, but I don't feel like he should have gone with that spot in particular, in my honest opinion. Styles is on a whole nother level, like we already knew. Then you had Nikki Bella versus Carmella. Overall, I thought this match was okay at best. I'm surprised that Carmella kicked out of some of Nikki's signature moves. And again, it went back and forth for a little bit. Carmelo working on Nikki's neck, what have you. But at the end, when it was all said and done, Nikki Bella got the win, which I kind of expected to, being that Carmella was getting the upper hand on Nikki Bella on SmackDown and those tag team matches, what have you. So, again, good to see Fearless Nikki get the win again. Then you had Heath Slater and Rhino versus The Uso for the SmackDown tag team titles. I thought this match was okay. Um, I'll be honest, I thought The Usos were going to win. Didn't happen. Because I feel like the Usos were going to go out there, win the tag team belts, and then go on to a few with American Alpha. But nonetheless, Rhino, as always, gets the win for his team. He speared one of the Usos for the 1-2-3. And still, your tag team champions, Heat Slater and Rhino. Then you had Baron Corbin and Jack Swagger in a singles match. I'll be very honest. I really wasn't into this match. The crowd itself were not into this match. They tried. Uh, but nonetheless, the crowd was dead for this. I'm happy that Corbin won. That's all I could say about it, to be honest, with the end of days. Then you had Dolph Ziggler in the Miz for the Intercontinental Championship, where if Dolph Ziggler were lost, he had to retire. And this match itself was amazing. It's also, this, in my opinion, should have main evented if the triple threat match would have gone first, like it did. The near falls, the drama behind it, people being invested in this match, emotionally in the crowd that's what pro wrestling is all about when you as a fan can get invested in a character in a wrestler in a match wanting that person or you know the match to be amazing wanting that wrestler to win it told a good story um Dolph Ziggler and The Miz they both have just amazing chemistry I don't know what it is but they just have amazing chemistry and 
I'm happy that Dolph got the win. He's now a five-time Intercontinental Champion. A part of me says that this feud will continue on. And who knows? But honestly, though, The Miz should transition now into that world title mix, if you ask me. Then he had Naomi versus Alexa Bliss. There was supposed to be Alexa Bliss versus Becky Lynch for the Women's Championship or the SmackDown Women's Championship. It didn't happen. Becky's out with an injury. Alexa Bliss went out there. She got a promo saying, hey, Becky's afraid. This is BS. As it was. Out came Naomi. They had a match. Literally lasted like five minutes or so where Naomi got the win. Why? I don't know why. You would assume because, hey, Alexa Bliss is your number one contender for the SmackDown Women's Championship. You want her to go out there and have some momentum going into, eventually, Becky Lynch versus Alexa Bliss. And what does WWE do? They have Naomi get the win. Could we see a three-way? Honestly, I don't want to see that. Honestly, I think this should be between Alexa Bliss and Becky Lynch for the championship. I think it will still happen on a SmackDown episode. You can add, you know, a Naomi, a Nikki Bella, a Carmella into that mix later on. Not now, in my honest opinion. But then we had the main event. Oh boy. Bray Wyatt and Randy Orton. I'll be honest. I was not into this match. This match did nothing for me. And I guess for a lot of people as well. Bray Wyatt got the win. Luke Harper is back. So pretty much Luke Harper got involved, he caused a distraction, and Bray got the win with Sister Abigail. Don't get me wrong, I'm happy that Luke Harper's on SmackDown. But it's a story of every Bray Wyatt win. It's him getting help from members of his family. If it's not Luke Harper, it was, you know, Braun Strowman, or the janitor himself, Eric Rowan. Where does Bray go from here? I don't even know. Where does Randy even go from here, to be honest? No mercy was decent to okay in my honest opinion. I felt that Backlash was better. I'm happy though that WWE, especially for SmackDown, they're giving them the old school pay-per-views like Backlash, No Mercy. It'd be cool to see Armageddon come back for SmackDown, um, Judgment Day, No Way Out in the long run. Drop your comment down below with your thoughts on No Mercy as a whole. Did y'all enjoy it or not? Follow me on Twitter, at HeelSteven. Make sure you like all my videos. And as always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, I'm Heel Steven, signing off.